Today's top picks from our commentary arm, Reuters Breaking Views. It's crunch time for Spain and its banking reform, and why Aviva's Moss is the first, but perhaps not the last, scalp of the shareholder spring. With me now to discuss these stories is Reuters Breaking Views assistant editor, Peter Tal Larson. Peter, um, let's start with Spain. The spotlight is on Bankia. Um, its chief, uh, well, ex chief, Rodrigo Rato, has gone, and there's talk of 10 billion euros um, capital injection. But is that real money? Well, that's one of the big questions we're still waiting to find out. I mean, what's good is that Spain finally seems to have acknowledged that it has a problem with its banks. It's been resisting putting public money into, or, or large amounts of public money, into the banking system for some time. Bankia, you remember, was an agglomeration of different savings banks, which they banked together and then forced onto the stock market last year. Um, but clearly what's happened now, what seems to have happened now, is the government has realized that this needs to be dealt with and they're going to put some money in. As you say, the question is, is this going to be real equity or is this going to be some form of contingent capital, um, which is some way for the government to pretend it that it's not like really having to borrow like this half, money? It sounds like a halfway house there, doesn't it? Well, it, it, we'll have to see the details, but I think there is a, there is a danger that it's going to be a fuss. This is important for two reasons. First of all, because Bankia is this big savings bank um, and has quite a complex structure of its own. But secondly, also because we're really going to look at this, I think, as hopefully the template for a broader uh, support or bailout for, for the Spanish banking system, which is what people have been waiting for for, for, for months, if not years. Um, and the big question then is, how much can Spain afford to put into these, bank, into these banks? And will it need to seek some kind of support or bailout from the Eurozone to do so? Um, but, yeah, but why should uh, people have any confidence in Spain if, uh, the, as you say, Bankia was an uh, amalgamation of all these cajas? Um, this was meant to be a solution to that problem. Why should they have confidence that what they're going to do next is going to be any more successful? Well, I think p people are going to be very sceptical. Um, but I think what's, what's good is that there's clearly at least a, finally a recognition that some public no money needs to be put at work here. Um, the difficulty is that actually even if you deal with all the legacy real estate problems in Spanish banks and you sort of solve those, that in itself won't solve the problem because Spanish banks, in the meantime, have been loading up on Spanish sovereign bonds. So they're kind of, they have a, it's a sort of mixture of the Irish banking problem and the Greek banking problem, and actually Spanish banks, to a certain extent, combine aspects of both of these. So it won't be a final, it won't be a, a total solution. But what's very clear is that Spain really needs to get this right. It cannot afford any more half-baked bank reforms. Uh, indeed, seems to be crunch time for Spain. Mm. Um, OK, on to the UK insurer Aviva. Um, its chief, Andrew Moss, has stepped down over, um, over a protest over pay. Um, why is this case so important? Well, I think it's, it, on the face of it, it's, it's the first chief executive of a UK company who has resigned following a, one of these big shareholder protests. Um, so, I mean, we've seen other shareholders go, uh, chief executives go, who we thought might be the subject of protest, but actually he's the first one to sort of where one follows the other. The interesting thing about Andrew Moss, though, is that he's been skating on thin ice for quite some time. The strategy has been unclear. The shareholder, the, sh the share price performance has been poor, and so to a certain extent, the pay issue here was not the, the 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 kind of the instigator of this, but it was probably just the catalyst that triggered his departure. Um, what's interesting about this, I think, is that, is that it really raises the stakes for for both for, 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 for investors and for shareholders, for, for, uh, sorry, for investors and for, and for chief executives. For chief executives, they have to think, if I'm already a bit unpopular, if people are already slightly grumbling about my performance, I need to be really careful about what kind of proposals, particularly on pay, that I take to, to my investors, because I could find myself on the receiving end of something like this, and then I might have to go. But for investors also, it's an interesting question, which is, if you want to register a protest against a pay package, in doing so, do you risk actually losing the chief executive who you're protesting against? Sometimes you may want that to happen, but there may be other cases where you just want to send a message on pay and you end up losing the guy instead. So um, very quickly, where does this end? I mean, uh, could we see, you, you talked about unpopular and uh, well-paid chief executives. Um, for example, could we see Bob Diamond at Barclays be pushed out? Well, I don't think we've got to that point. I mean, I think that was much more a specific protest over over pay and over sort of and a failure to to sort of prepare investors for what was happening on the pay front. But uh, it, it does mean that these the point about these revolts is that they can be quite messy and, and have unintended consequences. And I think that's what what's potentially clear here is that uh, you may be protesting about one thing, but it may have it may have knock on effects elsewhere. They may be easier to start than they are to 
end. Well, that's always true of revolutions, yes. yes. Peter, thank you very much. Well, that's all for now. My thanks there to Peter Tal Larson. For more agenda-setting financial insight, watch our US Breaking Views show every day at 12.30 Eastern, 17.30 BST. I'm Jamie McGeever. This is Reuters.